how are you doing Econ students? This is Mr. Clifford, welcome to ACDC Econ. Right now we're gonna talk about how the production possibilities curve shifts. When our problem comes along, you you must shift it! You must shift it! So it's important for you to get used to the idea of things shifting. In Econ we're explaining concepts and then we put those concepts to numbers, those numbers on a graph, and then usually we shift the graph. You're gonna see it in micro and macroeconomics, and it all starts with the production possibilities curve. We've established that any point inside the curve is inefficient because we could produce more of each good, and any point on the curve is efficient. And we know that a point outside the curve is impossible or not attainable given our current resources. But what if we get more resources? That's right, the production possibilities curve can shift. You must shift it! Now there's two things that shift the production possibilities curve a change in the quantity or quality of resources, or a change in technology. For example, in 1920, there's a certain number of cars and corn that we could produce. But now we can produce way more than we did before. That point right there that was once impossible is now possible. This is because we have new and better resources and because we have better technology. Now there's one more option that can shift the curve, which is the idea of trade. Now when countries specialize in trade, they can get other products at a lower opportunity cost than if they produce it themselves. That means the production possibilities curve would shift out in the amount that they can consume. It doesn't mean that they can produce more than they could before, but they can get more than before because of trade. Now you're gonna learn a whole lot more about this and you're gonna learn about something called comparative advantage. Make sure to watch this video, it's gonna help you out. Now let's get back to shifting the production possibilities curve. I'm gonna give you four examples and I want you to figure out what happens to the production possibilities curve for consumer goods and capital goods. Now a quick reminder, consumer goods are made for direct consumption, like pizza. Capital goods are made for indirect consumption, so it's like an oven. So capital goods are our tools and machinery to produce consumer goods. For each one of these scenarios, draw a separate production possibilities curve and show what happens in each one of the situations. Number one, what if we have faster computers and better technology? For number two, what if a country's power plants were destroyed and so it had to decrease the amount of electricity they could produce? For number three, what if there was an increase in the number of people who are unemployed and there was a recession in the economy? And number four, what if there's an increase in education? Make sure to pause this video and I'll go over the answers. For number one, if we have new computers and better technology, the entire production possibilities curve will shift outward. We can produce more consumer goods and more capital goods. For number two, a destruction of power plants would mean we have less resources, in this case electricity, which is super important for an economy, and that would cause a production possibilities curve to shift inward. We produce less consumer goods and we can produce less capital goods. And that's exactly what happened to Japan when there was the earthquake and the tsunami. The combination right here, which was efficient, became impossible because the resources were destroyed. Now let's compare that to number three, when we have a recession and a bunch of unemployed workers that would not be a shift in the curve, right? The curve does not shift inward because the workers are still alive. Now, if the workers died, that would mean we don't have a resource, the entire curve would shift inward. But the workers are alive, they're just not being used. That means it's a point inside the curve. Remember, a point in the curve is inefficient or it's unemployment of our resources. So workers who are unemployed is a point in the curve, not a shift in the curve. Okay, and for number four, the last one, an improvement in education would result in a shift outward of the curve. Remember, this is not more workers, it's better workers. The quality of workers increase. This is the idea of human capital. If our workers are better trained and more intelligent, that would cause us to be able to produce more stuff. To help you understand this concept, go ahead and watch the third episode of my series, Econ Movies. I use the movie Monsters, Inc. to explain the production 